Hi, this is Greg Marcello, and welcome to today's Learn Market Segment Tool and Analysis webinar. Uh, the purpose of today's webinar is to explain to you Learn's Market Segment Tool and the uh, analysis service that we can provide you. Just a few quick guidelines. Um, this is going to be about a 30-minute webinar at the most. And um, during the webinar, we will be recording it and sending that out to you after. Uh, we certainly suggest that um, you do not place the conference on hold. If you've got a telephone call, take that telephone call and then log back in. But most important, um, if you do have questions, uh, feel free to type those in. And at the end, Debbie will be reading those, and I will answer any and all questions to the best of my ability. So for those of you who I haven't met before, I'm Greg Marcello, and I'm one of the co-founders of LEARN. Um, I travel about 50 weeks a year visiting programs throughout North America, so I get a pretty good sense of what people are doing and what's working and what's not working. And I'm working with all types of programs, recreation programs, universities, colleges, associations. So pretty much across the board, I get a chance to see what folks are doing. And um, I'm responsible for building the various software tools that LEARN has developed to um, analyze data, and today being one of those tools, the market segment tool. And also, I do a lot of analysis of the data that comes in. So again, I'm seeing a lot of the information that you're providing, seeing what those repeat rates are, or what your best programming is, and those types of things, which is great, because it really helps me uh, when I'm working with other programs and talking about trends and benchmarks and best practices. So today's, uh, today's webinar, we've broken into three parts. First, I'm just going to give some high-level key points about market segment and market segmentation. And then I'm going to demo the tool for you. I think that's the best way to sort of get a sense for what's going on. Um, I'll take, we'll just go through and walk through, and I'll show you some different ways that I do analysis using the tool and talk a little bit about the type of information that you receive from LEARN. So, and then at the end, we'll do questions. Um, so regarding the market segment, some of the key points to keep in mind. First thing is, is that we know that we can't be everything to everybody. So no matter how hard you try to service everyone in your community, whether that's a local community or an international community, it's really hard to service everybody. And so we need to be able to determine really who are our best customers, who are our key market segments, so that we take our resources and use those resources correctly versus spreading them so thin that we really don't service anyone as well as we'd like to. There is a business principle called the Pareto principle, or the 80-20 principle. And this principle means that 20% of your customers generate 80% of your business. And this is true whether it's a continuing ed program, or if it's a grocery store, or a, um, a restaurant, et cetera. Normally, there's a smaller group of people who generate the bulk of your revenue, and ultimately, really, most of the profit that you generate. And so we want to have the ability to identify who those people are, so we do a better job marketing them. But also, we can take a look at their data and do a good job analyzing what sort of clusters or market segments that they cause to happen. And so this is called making data-driven decisions. We're collecting data, we're analyzing data, and then we can make good decisions about how we spend our programming dollars, how we spend our marketing dollars, how we use staff resources, et cetera. And so when we talk about the market segment tool, we're talking about student registration data. LEARN has other data analysis tools that looks at class programming, looks at contract training, looks at um, uh, promotions, uh, marketing, et cetera, that you do. But this tool is geared at looking at your student registration data, which is basically three key things. It's student info. So for example, if it's me, who am I? Where do I live? Uh, what's my telephone number, stuff like that that you would collect on any student. The second piece of student information is demographics. So demographics would be what's my age, for example, um, what's, uh, where, do, where do I live, um, what gender am I, those types of things which help me help you get a sense of who I am better. And then the other piece of data is purchasing data. And purchasing data is data that has to do with um, what it is I bought, when I bought it, how much money I spent, that type of thing. So when we think about all of this, what we're basically trying to do ultimately is come up with market segments. And market segments are clusters or groups of people. And normally those clusters or groups of people are defined by, by their gender, 
by their generation and by their interests. So for example, males who are Generation X who have interest in environmental training could be considered a market segment. And as we define that market segment and we determine how many people we actually have in that segment and how many potential people there are, that tells us that if that segment is worth actually going after. When we take a look at the market segment tool here in a moment, a couple of things is, number one, if you want your data analyzed, and we'll do this for anyone who's a LEARN member, you send, just contact us at info at learn.org and we will provide you the information that tells you what actually you have to send to us in order for us to do that analysis. Then we would actually analyze your data and we would provide you a report. It's about a three to five page report that when we actually report back on that data. And really what we're reporting back on is one, we take a look at your addresses and are your addresses classifying or not. That means are you doing a good job about putting addresses into your software system. Next we take a look at so, sort of how you look at your programming. We talk about it categories and subcategories. Sometimes people give us information by term and by type. But however you sort of group your programming, we then tell you what we see, we see in those groups. We also take a look at your courses so we can tell you what are the best, course, best courses both registration-wise and dollar-wise. We look at your gender and generation so we can see what, how your businesses or how registrations are breaking down by gender and how they're breaking down by generation. We look at carrier routes if you're a U.S. program and we look at postal codes if you're a Canada program or Canadian program. And um, just for folks to understand, when we talk about carrier routes or postal codes, basically we're talking about a more defined way of taking a look at where people live. And then we take a look at repeat rate and lifetime value. Um, and repeat rate being what percentage of people repeat from one period to the next period. And lifetime value being what's the value of your average customer over his or her lifetime. Then we can provide you a list of best customers. So who are your best customers all the, way, all the way down to your least performing customers. And then we also have a report that we generated that's called Next Course. And very simply what Next Course does is it takes a look at what did I sign up for. So example, if I signed up for ballroom dancing, it takes a look at everybody else who signed up for ballroom dancing and then what else did they sign up for that I didn't sign up for. So if 95% of those people also signed up for singing in the shower, but I didn't sign up for singing in the shower, then that would mean that you actually should be contacting me in order to get me to sign up for singing in the shower. And so it helps us do a little bit better job of being proactive about getting people into classes. So let's actually jump and do the demo now. And so let me just do a little movement of information here. And this is actually the tool we use to do the data analysis with. And I'm going to log in. This is exactly what would happen. And when I log in, I'm going to an area where all your data is. So your data, if you sent us a file, your data would be loaded into this tool. This is where I would go. And then I would go to the various reports. And this is actually what we're going to take a look at right now to sort of see how, these, how I utilize these reports to analyze your data. So the first report is called the Drill Down Data Analysis Report. And basically, this is allowing me to take a look at different fields and different ranges and drill down into your customer data as deep as I want to drill down. So for example, this report here is all your data is in the system. And when we're talking about fields, think of those as common. Greg, you've disappeared. I'm not sure why. I can see your report, but I can't hear you anymore. Greg, we can no longer hear you. Greg? Greg? 
Greg? Greg, we can no longer hear you. Okay. Okay, so here we are. We're back in, and I'm going to the first report, the drill down data analysis. Greg, report. just a second. Yes. I got I got to change you back to presenter. I was trying to get your attention. Okay. You want to? Yep. Okay. So good. Hold Sorry on. about that. I'm not sure why we lost you. Okay. Let's try that again. All right, can you see me okay, Deb? Uh, there you go, yep. But now right. we lost you back when you, just right after you signed into the tool. So if you want to start there. Yep. Okay, thank yep. you. So here I am. So, bas so basically what happens is that I'm given a data file, and that data file is loaded into the system, and then I go into the system in order to analyze that data. And this is the tool that we're utilizing. This is called the market segment tool. And there are a variety of different reports that can be used to do that analysis. So there's one report called the Drill Down Data Analysis Report, and that allows you to really sort of go in and slice and dice the data. So it allows me to really take an in-depth look at who you are and what you're doing. And this is actually what it looks like. This is where this is the Drill Down Data Analysis Report. And there are a bunch of different fields in the data you provide. So the fields are actually what it is that I'm taking a look at here and doing analysis with. So let's say, for example, I want to take a look at the categories. I want to take a look at your categories. And so I go in, and I want to get summary information. And it's telling me that you've got five categories. There's five records, and it's telling me the registration range between the lowest amount of registrations in a record to the highest amount, as well as the same thing with uh, registration dollars that are generated. So once I see that, I say, great, I want to go get more detail on that. And here I can actually see what the different categories are. One of the things that I can do in order to get a sense of what's going on with your program is do something called compare periods. And compare periods lets me look at time periods, and I could, in a system, automatically splits the data into two time periods, but I could go in and change this if I wanted to. But I'm just going to go with the split. And you can see that it's now showing me that in period one, we generated in business 504 registrations and about $54,000, while in period two, we generated 511 and, and little, little, um, a little under 48,000. So I can get a sense now by periods what's going on. So that's one thing I can do. Another thing that I can do, for example, is let's say you're a U.S. program, I can take a look at your carrier routes. And one of the things that we can do besides just look at stuff, I can go in and set minimum. So let's say, for example, I wanted to look at carrier routes that had 50 registrations, a minimum of 50 registrations, and generated at least $1,000. So then I go in and I'll click Get Summary Information, and I can see that there are 60 records that fall into that. So partially what I'm able to do is start to go in and filter data. And when I click Get Customer Detail, now I'm just taking a look at those carrier routes that actually fall into that data. But where the fun begins is I can go to this carrier route, 
and I can click, for example, drill down filter. So I want to just look at this carrier route. That's the only thing I want to look at. And so I want to say, you know, within that carrier route, what are the courses that people are signing up the most for? And so I go in. I can find out there's 150 courses. I click Yes, Customer Detail. And I can see that driver's ed is the course within that carrier route that's generating the most money. So it really gives me a chance to sort of play with this data and analyze it. One of the other things that I can do is do the market segmentation piece that I was talking about a minute ago. So for example, if I go in and say, I want to look at gender, generation, and category. And I click Get Summary Information, I can see there's 76 records. And if I click Customer Detail, I can see that females who are Generation Y, who are taking classes in the category Self and Family, are generating my most registrations and the most revenue. And I could even dig deeper into this if I wanted to. So for example, I can click Female. I, can, I mean, excuse me, I can click this group. I can click drill down data and I can say, you know what, that's interesting, but now let's find out what courses they're actually taking. So I can go in, I can see they're taking 94 different courses, customer detail, and here's where I'm seeing, geez, by, you know, mo a lot of these registrations and dollars are coming from this driver's ed program, the SAT preparation, et cetera. So there's lots of information that you're able to look at by just being able to sort of slice and dice and pay with this, uh, play with this data. So that's one piece of the tool. The next piece of the tool, for those of you who are US programs, when the data is loaded in, it actually matches up your addresses to carrier routes. And that's how I'm able to determine if you've got good or bad addresses. And if you've got bad addresses, actually I can run a list and I can actually tell you what your bad addresses are so that you could actually take the list and go into your system and update your records if you wanted to. I would say that most programs as of late that I've been analyzing are somewhere over 96 percent of their addresses are good, which is very good because you want to be 93 percent or higher. So most programs are doing a much better job of collecting sort of the, the, the student and general student information into their system. The next report is called the repeat rate or lifetime value, and this is where I was saying before where you're trying to see what percentage of your customers repeat and then what's their value over their lifetime. So again, what the system is doing, it's splitting the data into two time periods. So it's basically saying from time period one to time period two what's going on. So the number of people in time period one who repeat into time period two as a percentage of period one is actually your repeat rate. And so when I click generate report, the system actually is telling me that in period one, we had you know, 3,339 registrations. In period two, we had 3,245 registrations. I mean, excuse me, not registrations, people. At 3,339 3, people, and in um, period two, 3,245 people. Of those 3,339, 402 of them repeated into period two. And that gave this program a repeat rate of 12.34%. The system also is taking a look at what your average fee is, and at the same time, using a formula we built in, determines what the lifetime value of your average customer is. But you can actually dig deeper. So for example, let me take a look at, repeat, let's look at repeat rate lifetime value by generation. So now I can see that of the five of the of the five key generations that I work with, that the one with the highest repeat rate is Generation Z, and there's my highest repeat rate. Although the one that has the best lifetime ba value is Generation Y, and so again, I can play with this information. And if I filtering the system, I can be just looking at only baby boomers and analyzing them, and I could analyze it by um, by birth years even in more depth if I wanted to. So that's another report. Another one that we have is called the Next Course Report. And this is the one where I was talking about earlier, where the system determines what other courses you ought to be taking. And it runs a, uh, runs a report that sometimes takes a few minutes to run. So I'm just going to show you an example of the report. 
and you should be seeing now a spreadsheet. And basically, for example, the system, I, it runs a report that says, you know, what is it that the person signed up for? How many regist other people registered? So in this class, there were actually 13 people who registered. I was the 13th. But of the 12 other people who registered, 10 of them registered for this class. And so you'd look at it, and certainly in this example, you would say, well, I know. They took bookbinding two but didn't care about bookbinding one. But in some, as you begin to look at, you sort of wonder. I mean, you wonder why there's that relationship. And so if we go down to, let's just say, um, you know, you got a financial empowerment program where six other people signed up for, and four of those signed up for Debt Happens. So probably, if Debt Happens is being offered again, we ought to contact Carla and see if she's going to be interested in it. And so it's just a way of taking a look at the work you can do to try to go get more people to participate in your programs. So that's what's called the next course report. And then the last report is the best customers report. And at LEARN, we talk about something called star dogs. And star, a star dog report means is that basically someone who has performed better than others is a star. Someone who performs around like everybody else is performing is a cash cow. Someone who's kind of inconsistent in their performance would be a problem child and then someone who's underperformed is a dog. And so what the system here does is that, again, it takes a look at the, the last registration in the system. So for example, this data file I'm working with is from 2010. And so it's not starting with today's date, but it's using the last registration date in the file. And it's saying a star is someone who registered in the last six months. So from that last date forward, or backwards, six months and spent equal or more than the average student. That would be considered a star. They've registered recently, they've spent more than everybody else. Cash cow is registered recently, just hasn't spent as much. A problem child hasn't registered recently, but, they, but they've spent more than the average. And then a dog hasn't registered recently and didn't spend much. So it's basically taking your data and looking at people that way. And so, for example, if I go in and I put student first name and student last name into the system and I click run report, then the system is running, and we'll go into detail here, the system is running this, this star dog report so I can actually see what's going on and who those stars are and who those dogs are, et cetera. And so when we see this pop up in a minute. We'll see that from STARS, we have student who registered from 6-1-10 and spent more than $168, which was their average, which totaled this amount of revenue. And so now down below here, I can see all those STARS. I can see that Milo was my best student dollars-wise. But I can also go all the way down to the bottom, and I begin to see, you know, here are some people, and they've only spent a dollar, and they haven't registered. And they registered a while ago. And so this gives me a sense now of who those good customers are that I want to go after and who may be ones that aren't worth the time or energy to go after. So these are the different reports. And so we generate a report for you using this data analysis. And basically, as I said earlier, we take a look at your addresses. We take a look at um, your categories and your subcategories, or if you have term or type or whatever it might be. We look at how you group your business. We look at your courses. We then take a look at your gender and generations. Then we take a look at those carrier routes or postal codes. And then we go in and do the repeat rate and lifetime value. And then after that, we look at, um, we look at who your primary market segment, so that piece where I took a look at gender, generation, category. And then we go back and finally take a look at um, um, your next course. And if there's other questions, if there's other things that you want, you know, people a lot of times will respond back and say they need a little bit more detail in certain areas, then we'll do that also. But the goal is, is to be able to provide you that data because most of you have the ability to collect the data. What you don't have the ability to do normally is analyze the data. And so that's why we built these tools. So those are the things I wanted to talk about. I'm sorry about losing the internet there for a minute or so. Um, but those, those are the things that I wanted to walk you through. And so Deb, do we have any questions that have come up? I don't have any as of yet.
Uh, again, if anybody has okay, any questions, me... there's a toolbar, a question box on the toolbar. Feel free to post them there. And let me just say a few more things. So really important to realize that this is one of the many services that Learn provides. You know, we do um, consulting and a lot of folks email in and answering questions and our goal is really to answer those questions and get you the information you need. If you ever, haven't had a website or a brochure critique done, you ought to send that, those in or send us in, you know, the address for your website. And those are normally, you know, five to, pay, five to ten page critiques that take a look at in depth. Um, what it is you're doing with your printed promotions and with your website. The data analysis, um, this is an example of taking a look at your registration data and this is what we would do. We would provide a report back um, that would give you the type of information that you saw me taking a look at in the system. And then we certainly encourage you to go to the Learn Club. We've done a great update on our website. So we have a brand new website and um, lots of great information there and the Learn Club within that website is where there's always new information, new articles, new tips, that type of thing. And then many of you are part of LinkedIn and there's lots of different LinkedIn groups where lots of folks are sharing best practices so certainly you want to utilize that. But for today's presentation if you haven't done a market segment analysis I certainly recommend that you contact us and get information about what it is we need in order to do that analysis for you and then send that data in so that we can analyze that, analyze your data and give you some, you know, really good information about things you ought to be doing with your program or, or things that you ought to be looking at to make really good decisions. So that's what I wanted to cover. Um, Deb, I don't think it looks like there's questions, right? So I would say that um, if you have any questions after the fact, feel free to email me at marcello at learn.org and I'm happy to answer any questions and help you with anything. If you're interested in having your data analyzed or a website critique or a brochure critique or anything like that, just contact info at learn.org and um, someone will get back to you really quickly with uh, whatever it is that you need. So thanks a lot. Think in terms of market segment. This, um, this uh, presentation will be sent to you uh, so that you can refer back to it and show it to others if there's others in your organization who um, should be taking a look at this and thinking about this type of analysis. So thanks a lot. Have a great day. And uh, we'll hopefully be seeing you at a future Learn event.